So very often on the internet you'll find people debating cooling systems and what makes them better or worse. And specifically thermostats versus coolant. Uh, people will say, well, well, some people will say remove your thermostat for better cooling and some people will say no, no, that will overheat your engine. Well, I hate to break it to one side of that argument, but physics doesn't agree with you that slower moving coolant will cool better. In reality, the faster you move that coolant through the engine and the radiator, the better it will cool, the more heat it will pull out of the engine up to the cooling capacity of that radiator and fan arrangement. Once you exceed that, obviously it can't pull any more heat out and then, you know, it will start to build and build and build. So, I have a perfect opportunity to demonstrate that. I have a mower, water-cooled mower, hooked up with a mechanical temperature gauge. It's brand new and I've verified the calibration of it and we have removed the thermostat. So let's show you what happens with that. So I have removed the thermostat on this mower uh, for other reasons, but I figured it was a perfect time to demonstrate this to all the non-believers in physics out there. So basically there is no restriction in the cooling system so the faster we spin that water pump and fan the faster it will move the coolant through the radiator and the more heat it will pull out. And I'm going to prove that by firing this up. First I'm going to get it real hot, hotter than it normally runs and that way we'll know for sure it's up to operating temperature and then we'll run it under full throttle and we'll run it under idle to demonstrate that a faster coolant flow pulls out more heat now if the if removing the thermostat removing that restriction actually reduces the cooling in other words if it gets if it gets hotter the faster we run the engine then that means that you need that thermostat, that restriction in there in order to get optimum cooling. If, in fact, when we run the engine faster, the temperature goes down more than it does at idle, then that means that it's pulling more heat out of the engine at high speed, and thus the thermostat is not necessary for optimum cooling, and in reality it actually cools better without the thermostat. Now. To put a caveat on that, the reason engines have thermostats is to regulate the cooling. It'll get up to operating temp faster, it'll stay there, and there'll be less fluctuations in the system because that thermostat can account for those fluctuations and keep the temperature balanced. When you remove the thermostat, you can bounce that temperature needle up and down a little bit according to engine conditions, which hopefully we will see when we run this. One more caveat. I know right now some of you are thinking, wait a minute. When you run that engine faster, the fan is also spinning faster. And you're right. But that's the way pretty much all engines work. The fan speed is tied to the engine speed. Most of them are mechanical fans. A lot of modern vehicles are going to electric fans. However, most of them are multi-speed electric fans and they're tied to kick on at a certain temperature. When the radiator reaches a certain temperature, the fan kicks on and then when it reaches or exceeds a certain temperature then the high speed kicks on. So that's a little different. All I'm trying to show with this demonstration, this test, is that when the coolant moves faster through an engine with its setup, the way it's set up without the thermostat, that it's going to cool better. That's all I'm trying to show. If, if you want to get down into the nitty-gritty and deal with fans and how much heat it's pulling out of the radiator that's a whole nother topic this isn't to test that this is just to test the base theories of coolant moving with no thermostat so if you want to get into the speed of coolant moving through a radiator and just the base speed of the coolant the math is what it is Thermod thermodynamics is what it is it's it's gonna pull out more heat that's 
just the bare basics. I'm not trying to prove that. What I'm trying to show is actually removing the thermostat, removing that restriction, letting more water flow through the radiator, and it'll cool better. That's just what I'm trying to demonstrate. So that's enough of me talking. Let's get into the demonstration portion of this. So we're starting off here at about 200 degrees, a little below 200 degrees, and we're running at high throttle. So you can see the temperature immediately starts to come down. I had to work hard to get it up to 200 degrees working the hydraulics and everything. It's hotter than it usually runs. I wanted to start high for this test. So you can see immediately the needle drops and starts heading down towards 190, which is pretty close to normal operating temperature, even with the thermostat out. And you can see even it's still dropping. It should drop below 190. Watch it here for a minute. I'm, I'm playing this one at normal speed so you can actually see how quick the response is. There's no real load on the engine. This is just sitting at full throttle with nothing engaged, just sitting here. So you can see it's already below 190. That didn't take long, that was only about a minute and a half. And it dropped about 10 degrees. So on this gauge, anything below 190, the um, the, the marks are a little different because of the way the gauge is calibrated. Above 190, each one of those marks, between 190 and 230, each one of those marks is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see we're kind of heading down towards 185 right now-ish, but it's hard to say exactly what that temperature is, but it's below 190. We're at about two and a half minutes here. You can see it's kind of stabilized now, so that's the temperature it wants to run at. Full throttle, no load, just sitting here. So pretty soon what I'm going to do is reach over and pull the throttle back to idle, and then we'll see what happens to the temperature needle. see at this point it's it's not really moving. I wanted to demonstrate that it had kind of stabilized so that's why I'm holding it here for a little bit. So now I'm gonna pull the throttle back to idle. I'm gonna I'm gonna time lapse this one a little bit just for the sake of time and demonstration. I think this is about at two times speed but you can see it's it's climbing back up slowly but surely. Now probably won't go all the way back up to 200 degrees because that was under full load. So you can see it's running hotter. Now I'm going to raise the throttle back up again to demonstrate uh, you know, for repeatability and you can see how quickly the needle drops again. And this is at normal speed, and you can see the needle go down. So you could sit here and do this all day, repeatedly back and forth, to demonstrate this. But the idea is, as the engine speed, RPM, goes up, the water moves faster through the engine, it gathers more heat, removes it from the engine and the radiator dispenses that heat faster. 
So the only thing we're changing here is the speed of the engine. And logically, you'd think that running the engine faster would generate more heat that it would have to pull out and would have a difficult time of that. But as long as you're within the operating specs of your cooling system, meaning that it can physically remove that amount of heat, then the faster you run your engine, the more heat it will pull out of it. That's assuming a no load condition. Obviously adding load to the engine changes this somewhat. So there you have it. The faster we ran the engine with no thermostat, the more heat it pulled out of the system. Now, obviously that would only work up to a certain point. This is a small radiator. And so when you exceed that, you know, maximum heat that it can draw out of the system, then obviously it will overheat. But that would happen with or without a thermostat, regardless if you were making that much heat. So that doesn't, that doesn't matter for the purposes of this test. So, I mean, hopefully, this does something to answer that question and kind of prove the physics of it, even though it's already been proved multiple times, I know. But I figured this was a great opportunity to demonstrate it, and since I had everything right here, and I don't know, you know, hopefully that justifies what I've been saying to people over the years. <laughs> anyway, if you like this content, we do kind of stuff like this. We rebuild things, we salvage old mowers, cars, things like that, equipment. So if you want to see that, feel free to subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so you see more of our content when it comes out. And as always, thanks for watching.